We true our diamond wheel offline on a separate truing station. We then remount the wheel on the grinding machine, stick it, and start grinding. We don't use an adapter. We just mount straight on the non-tapered spindle. There's a debate in the shop. Some say this is wrong, but others say our wheel tolerances are so tight that we don't need one. What's the story? Every super abrasive grinding wheel has a hub, and that hub is going to have a diameter. Now the diameter of that hub obviously has to be bigger than the spindle on which it mounts so that it can fit over that. Now there's going to be a certain tolerance there and you're going to put that on there, it's going to shift around and there's going to be a certain wheel untruth or a certain wheel eccentricity. Now if you true your wheel with super abrasives or if you dress your wheel with conventional abrasives on the same spindle then whatever truth you have on that spindle is just dressed away so your wheel is concentric or true with the spindle. But if you true your wheel on a separate truing station and then bring it over and stick it on the machine, no matter how hard you try, you're always going to have a little bit of play. And that play sometimes is big, sometimes is small, depending on how lucky you are uh, when you mount it. Now that's why we use tapered spindles, basically to lock that in there and reduce that play. But if you're not using an adapter, then you're truing it on the truing station, taking it off, putting it on. Maybe you'll get lucky, maybe you won't, but you're going to have a certain play in there. So when that wheel starts spinning, that play is going to look something like this. The wheel's going to rotate, but there's going to be a high point on that wheel. Now that high point, when it starts to grind, it's going to create a series of scallops in the workpiece and that's inevitable, but we want those scallops to be as small as possible. If we have a lot of run out, we're going to have big scallops. If we have very little run out, we're going to have little scallops. So here's some tests that I did just a few months ago where we measured the normal force and the tangential force during grinding with a wheel that was pretty eccentric. Pretty, uh, it was true, but it was shifted off of the hub a fair bit. And remember, the normal force is the force pushing up on the wheel as we're grinding. The tangential force is the force pushing in this direction. Normal forces cause chatter. Tangential forces cause heat and grinding burn. So we want to keep those as small as possible. What we see over here is grinding with a wheel that's relatively true. We see the forces go up. They're pretty steady. They go back down. Everything's OK. What we see over here is that exact same grinding wheel, but all we did was we dressed it on the machine, we took it off, we took it, put it back on, maybe we got a little lucky, maybe we didn't on how much eccentricity we had, and then we started to grind. This is from a single pass, so the grinding wheel has gone across the workpiece just a single time, and you can see the normal force and the tangential force, boom, 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 hitting, not hitting, hitting, not hitting, it's going to cause surges in the forces, bigger forces than if we had a true wheel or if we had a non-eccentric wheel. Bigger normal forces mean bigger risk of chatter. Bigger tangential forces mean bigger risk of burn. And also, because we've got this intermittent cutting, we're going to have very big scallops on the workpiece. Now, a couple years ago, I visited a company in Europe, and they were doing using diamond wheels, uh, and they were truing their wheel off machine, and then they took the wheel off, went over the machine, mounted it, started grinding. And I said, no, that's not the way you should do it. If you're going to true off machine, you've got to true on an adapter. That adapter and the wheel have to travel together, and then you've got to put that tapered adapter on the machine. And they said, no, 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 because our, we don't need to do that. Our wheel tolerances are so tight that we don't have any untruth, or we don't have any eccentricity. Now, if you look at what the wheel eccentricity is, most grinding wheels are manufactured to about an H7 tolerance, some are an H6, but if you look at that, you're looking at around 25 microns, or a thou potential gap or play within there. That's too much. You put it on there, it's going to move around, 
and you're not going to get that zero or one micron or two micron uh, or one tenth eccentricity that you really need. Now this customer said, no, 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 we have such tight tolerances, we don't need to do that. So I said, okay, here's a test. Went over to the truing station, we put a dial gauge, an indicator, on the wheel, and I said, okay, true up your wheel. They trued up their wheel, we looked at the run out on the wheel, while it was on the truing station, and it was less than a micron, uh, less than two microns, less than a tenth. I said, okay, so far so good. I said, now take that wheel off, and put it back on the truing station as carefully as you want. I mean, you can just take the wheel off, not rotate anything, try to put it on the exact same position, tighten it up, and see what you get. So we did that, put it back on, measured run out again, run out had drum, jumped to about 30 microns, or a thou in two tenths. They were all shocked, they said, oh, this can't be, this is crazy, but we have such tight tolerances, I say, no, it all, it all fits. Look at your tolerances, look at the runout you get. When the operator remounts it, sometimes maybe he'll get lucky, sometimes he won't get lucky, but he's always gonna have that play in the machine or in the, between the spindle and the hub. So if you're gonna use a truing station, you've got to use a tapered adapter. The adapter and the wheel travel together. Um, or if you're going to take that approach where you're not going to use an adapter, you're just going to mount it on there, you've got a true on machine. And I've seen this situation lots of times, lots of companies get a lot of arguments with them. They say, no, 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 we don't need to do that. But have them true it, put the dial gauge, gauge on there, indicate the run out, see what it is before and after. Or better yet, go over to the machine. It's going to get even worse when you go over to the machine and you're going to find that runouts are going to be 25 microns, 50 microns, 75 microns, 1 thou, 2 thou, 3 thou. People are going to be shocked and say, oh, that can't be. But it can be, and it makes sense when you look at the tolerances and what you'd expect.